unprecedented quick spending. Stop it. Take a breath. Listen to the people. Let's slow down. Why do you say we get some input from some non-politicians on the subjects? Stop making everything an emergency. Stop speed reading our bills into law. I am not an activist, she writes. I am not a community organizer, nor am I a terrorist or a militant or a violent person. I am a mother and a grandmother. I am a working woman. I am busy, busy, busy and tired, tired, tired. I thought we elected competent people to take care of the business of government so we could work, raise our families, pay our bills, have a little recreation, complain about taxes, endure our hardships, pursue our personal goals, cut our lawn and wash our cars on weekends, and be responsible contributing members of society. And to teach our children to be the same, all the while living in the home of the free and the land of the brave. I entrusted you with upholding our Constitution I believed in the checks and the balances to keep you from getting too far off course. What happened? You are very far off course. Do you really think that I find humor in uh, your attempt in hiring a speed reader to unintelligibly ramble through a bill you signed into law without knowing what it contained? I don't find it funny. I find it a mockery of the responsibility we entrusted to you. It's a slap in the face. We're not laughing. The arrogance. Why is it? Why is it that you feel, I feel as though you would not trust me to make a single decision about my own life and how I would live it, but you expect that I should trust you with a debt that you have laid on all of us and our children. We didn't want the TARP bill. We said no. We'd repeal it if we could. I'm not so sure that we can't still do that. There's such an urgency and recklessness in all of the recent spending. From my perspective, it seems, this is one of my favorite lines, it seems as though you've all gone insane. I also know that I am far from alone in these feelings. Do you honestly feel that your current pursuits have merit to patriotic Americans? We want it to stop. We want to put the brakes on everything that's being rushed by us and forced upon us. We want our voice back. You have forced us to put our lives on hold, to straighten out the mess that you are making. We are going to have to give up our vacations. We're going to have to give up our time spent with our children. Any relaxation time that we may have had and money we can't afford to spend on you to bring our concerns to Washington. Our president often knows the right buzzwords to say. His favorite new one is unsustainable. Well, no kidding. How many tens of thousands of dollars did we have to pay for the focus groups that came up with that one? We don't want your overpriced words. Stop treating us like morons. We want you to stop focusing on your reelection and do the damn job that we want done, not the job that you want done or not the job your party wants done. You work for us. And at this rate, I guarantee not for long. We are coming. We will be heard. We will be represented. You think that we are so busy with our lives that we'll never come for you. And we were. But now you've gone and done it. We are the formerly silent majority. All of us who quietly work, pay our taxes, obey the laws, vote, save money, keep our noses to the grindstone. Now looking up at you. You have awakened us. And a patriotic spirit so strong and so powerful, it had been sleeping too long. You have pushed us too far. Our numbers are far too great. They may surprise you. They may surprise you. For every one of us who will be there, there will be hundreds who would not come. Unlike you, we will have their trust. We will represent them honestly, rest assured. 
They will be at the polls on voting day to usher you out of office. We've canceled our vacation. We'll use our last few dollars saved. We'll find the representation among us, and a grassroots campaign will flourish. We didn't ask for this fight, but the gloves are coming off. We didn't come in violence. We don't come in violence, but we are angry. You will represent us, or you will be replaced with somebody who will. There are candidates among us who will rise like a phoenix from the ashes that you have made of our Constitution. Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, understand this. We don't care. Political parties are meaningless to us. Patriotic Americans willing to do right by us and our Constitution is all that matters to many of us now. We are going to fire every single one of you who abuse our power and seek more. It is not your power, it is ours, and we want it back. We entrusted you with it, and you abused it. You, you are dishonorable and dishonest. As Americans, we're ashamed of you. You have brought shame to us. If you are not representing the needs and the wants of your constituency loudly and consistently in spite of the objections of your party, you'll, you're going to be fired. We don't care about political parties. Hear us. You should be loyal to us, not to them, because we'll get you fired, and they're not going to save you. If you do or can represent me, she writes, my issues, my views, it's time for you to make your identity known. You need to make some noise about it. Speak up. I need to know who you are. If you do not, you will be herded out with the rest of the sheep. We will replace the whole damn Congress if need be. We are coming. We are coming for you. Who do you represent? What do you represent? Listen. We are coming. We the people are coming. I, uh, I talked to this woman today. She said to me, I don't want to be this person. I've never been this person. I'm a grandma. She said, but they forced me to do it. We have been fools to trust them for so long. You can read that letter at glenbeck.com. Read it and sign your name after it if you agree with what she said.